Looky here, you're back. And just in time for the final game of the day and of Group B, it is Mega versus Vega. And honestly, Frosker and Vega are looking unstoppable so far, undefeated so far at MSI. And that's what it feels like is really at stake here. Can Mega put a roadblock in these guys and make sure that they don't go 6-0 and in the group phase, or will Vega just kind of coast into their best of five against the LMS? They've been winning pretty swiftly as well. Don't, uh, don't forget that already locked in the first place, they are looking to close out the day with a win before their series against Flash Wolves tomorrow. Mega, if they win here, will secure third place, which isn't too bad. And again, for the most part, just want to try and go out on a high note, represent your region well. And I really want to see uh, some key picks. I feel like we keep asking for these pocket picks that keep getting denied away. G4, this is your time. I know you're a Zed player. Lock it in. Do it for me. Well, last time there was no Zed, but we'll take a look at what did happen the last time these two teams faced off. And uh, like most games against Vega Squadron, it doesn't feel very good as that is just a straight curve. That is like a perfect ramp to launch off of. And as you'll note, if you look down Oh, the composition actually very standard here for Vega. They have been playing a lot of upbeat things, particularly Gadget. Probably my favorite player to watch so far in the tournament. Just so creative, has so many fun different picks in the bot lane and looks competent on all of them, which is a pretty difficult thing to say. I don't know many players that are equally as strong on Heimeninger and Nico, but here we are. <laughs> and that's one of the coolest things about Vega Squadron. It's why um, I was really psyched for them coming into the... Uh, uh, the tournament is that they are so creative and it isn't just always about Gadget that can flex a lot of these creative picks around the map but it usually does start with their bot lane Santos and Gadget uh, feel like they could play everything. They've played the Ezreal support, they've played the Jarvan support, they've played Mordekaiser, we've seen Heimerdinger at this tournament. Not only that, he was a boss Heimerdinger. Yeah, he was good. Blocking cues left and right from that Lee Sin. Well again, we've seen so much from Vega. It's tough to ask for more but what is a team with everything so far in the MSI playing stage? have in store. We'll find out in a minute or two when we do move ourselves into draft. And I feel like this is kind of a situation of, you know, usually when you get to this point, you're like, okay, what are they going to hide? What are they going to keep close to the chest? Is kind of like the secret strategy that they'll save for the best of five or save for their upcoming opponent. I don't think that Vega have anything to hide. I don't think that they're out of strategies yet, but the fact that they've been so fundamental, not just with like their more uh, offbeat picks, but also in just kind of their core League of Legends, I think this game's probably just about having fun, probably about flexing on your opponent. It feels really good to go 6-0, but you know, if they drop the game here to Mega, I don't think it's the end of the world. Yeah, and I think for Mega, as you mentioned, G4 has that said. I think we can look to him and Lloyd kind of having actually a pretty good tournament despite overall performance obviously not being great for the team. G4, a player that's been around forever and continues to show up in international despite his uh, long career. And the unfortunate thing about uh, Mega Squadron and uh, kind of the LST as a region is we had you know, questions about how they were going to measure or what the measuring stick was going to be to international competition. You know, with the VCS, um, moving away with the GPL no longer existing, it felt like there was kind of this vacuum of power in Southeast Asia. And if they would be able to compete again on the international stage, and unfortunately for, for Mega, it didn't align here. When you watch them domestically, they were head and shoulders above all their other competition. But, you know, a lot of work left for uh, LST to do before they start really bringing a lot of power back into their region when they go to these international stages. Yep, still, st certainly feels like there's some rebuilding there, but as evidenced by, again, the tournament being held where it is, a lot of just uh, presence in the region overall. So you have to think things can only get better with time. And it is still nice to see someone as familiar as G4 still playing at internationals. And again, they have new members joining their team. June and Pop are still relatively young to this squad. So maybe it's just a matter of time. And the next time if we see Mega, maybe they'll feel a bit more comfortable as we get into this champion slot. All right, so one of the most fun questions to ask against Vegas Squadron is what do you ban? They'll start things off with Karthus and Rek'Sai. <laughs> Well, uh, limiting that jungle pool quite severely. That's three junglers now taking off the board. I feel like uh, prioritizing a comfort pick for June is really the way to go. Hecarim stands out as kind of the big pick that's uh, been popping up a lot, as well as the Kindred. Also Cerner Tarek, so Tarek will get banned away by Mega. There's Silas, Callista, and Jarvan, actually the three bands there for Vega. And Hecarim, surprise, first pick. Yep, so now that we're in standard league, um, you pick something like a flex pick, it fits very well into the jungle, very well into the top lane. We've seen uh, Rocky be decently successful with it or have his moments to shine on it, but on the other side, flex, flex, flex. Yep, Rise and Aurelia picked pretty quickly as well. So we'll see what Mega do want to respond with here. Things like the Galio are also still available, uh, unless you want to take a, a safer support. I know that Pop is pretty proficient on the Galio. We'll take it here. 
curious to see uh, what Santos wants to play. Do we see something like Tom Cantor, which we've actually seen a lot today? Maybe something like the Brom, which we saw a lot in the earlier stages of the play-in. So I feel like if they don't do something crazy, Brom would kind of be my go-to. Santos um, seems to be really confident on the champion, even if uh, you know sometimes the matchups that he plays in the 2v2 aren't the best for Brom, still makes it work for him. Also, one more pick, of course, here to come through for Mega Akali. Assassin uh, potentially for G4, potentially for Rocky with flexibility between her and Hecarim. It's not the Zed, but I'll take it. I do like watching ninjas kind of fly around the screen. Basically the same. Basically the same. All right, well, curious to see how it all shakes up. But pretty solid start there for Mega. Ooh, a Shen. I believe our first Shen of the tournament here for Vega. And uh, it's actually the second for them. Santos played it ah. in the support position. Um, I expect it to be a support Shen, but that is still a lot of flex picks. Well. Phase two of Ban should be fun then for the Mega side. But Vega, of course, will have first dibs on what champion they'd like to take out of the pool. The answer is Lee Sin. So continuing to cut junglers away from June. And I feel like this is actually really devastating for Mega. June has shown that he's not super comfortable on stage right now. And because the jungle pool is getting whittled down so far, um, he's going to have to really reach outside of his comfort pool to find something that works for him. Perhaps the outside of the box is Hecarim for him, of course. Can be flexed there, as you mentioned. But see if he loses another jungler here, potentially, with Vega having their fifth and final ban. And yeah, Karzik's going to leave the pool as well. That is four, uh, five junglers taken away. That hurts. Gadget also going to lose two picks, Heimendinger and Nico. Say bye-bye for now. But there's always Kane. There's always Graves. We'll give them uh, their 15 seconds or so to lock in this next pick. Um, Camille or Gragas would kind of be the next one that June goes to, so I feel like it was kind of, do I want to continue denying you? Flashes both of his champions. June can now look for either some hard engage, maybe some disengage. I feel like it'd be Gragas because it is a kindred, and we've seen how that interaction of the cast and the lambs respite can really cause a lot of problems for kindred. Certainly can. A nice takeaway there. See how Mega do want to finish off their draft though. Civic going to be the hover for now. Two seconds left to decide on what this pick's going to be, and then of course they will finish their draft here. And now we're going to have our uh, questions answered. You know, is this going to be G4's Akali? Is this going to be Rocky's Akali? Is it going to be a jungle Hecarim, or will we see something else come out for June? You mentioned something like Camille, still has that here, has the Gragas, but does lock in Xin Zhao. Very aggressive jungler. I have to think we'll be seeing quite a lot of early game shenanigans on his side. I mean, one would hope, but otherwise, a, uh, the ability to play outside lanes here for uh, Mega, and I feel like that's what you, you really want. You want agency for your carry like G4, which on a champion like Akali, who can go forward, go backwards, uh, cause a lot of havoc. She can team fight depending on how far she gets ahead. I feel like that's kind of the sweet spot for them, and I really want to see them set up G4 for a lot of success on such a power pick like Akali. Last pick here, though, is Vladimir. So pretty standard stuff actually on the Vegas side. The fact that we oh, say gadgets. standard stuff. No, it's the standard. Yeah, I mean, that's more standard than Heimendinger and Nico, which both got banned away. Um, One of their more uh, relaxed comps, I guess I'll call it. Is it though? I mean, it won't matter because the way they play has been also extremely high octane so far in this group. So no matter what, you can kind of feel the pace of the game's been picking up on the back half of the day. and. Uh, Vega don't look to be stopping anytime soon. And big smiles on the face of Gadget. Uh, he certainly is is ready and plugged in to play his Vladimir. Again, a lot of mage play, a uh, lot of mage champions he's played down there. I'm sad that we a didn't get to see. A lot of champions he's played down there. <laughs> uh, he's got the Vigar sitting back there. I really? Yeah, I really wanted the ADC Vigar. Goodness gracious. Well, certainly a play that's been a lot of fun to watch so of all of Vega Squadron. So we'll see how they look for their final game before their knockout bout tomorrow versus the Flash Wolves. For Mega, this will be their last hurrah, but not a bad way to end your tournament. If you can't get any further, might as well take down the people that beat you. Yeah, and that one is going to feel good. So, Mega, can they be a speed bump to Vega's momentum riding into this pass of five? Are Vega going to get the 6-0 and and just stomp their way through the group uh, stage? This is what we're looking for. I want to see G4 pop off. I want to see Gadget just flex on this Vladimir. I'm ready. I'm ready, too. Always a fun side to watch, but we'll see what happens here as a... Hey, don't get sleepy there, buddy. Gadget with a big yawn. It's like Vladimir, this champion's easy. Played the hard champions already. This one's straightforward. <laughs> this team's out under seven. So for our final time today, it's actually the final day of group stage. So we'll be sunsetting group stage for this year, of course. We'll be back. Don't tweet at me. For their knockouts tomorrow. We'll 
to see two new teams enter the fray before moving into the main stage. Feels like it's gone by so quickly. It has. Hard to say what that is. And all I see. I'm going to say the pace of League of Legends increasing. Actually, I know what it is. <laughs> you thought it was going to be a long day for us, Guru? Not today. Games have certainly. We left a long game to Azale and Dracos. They graded this. <laughs> we need the high octane league. Already, we've got some uh, some taunting back and forth. We're spamming our spamming our abilities, using some taunts. I was curious if we're going to have some level one action, just because it feels like. Uh, you know, when it's pride that's on the line, either team wants to have a little bit of swagger. Well, if we are going to find some of that swagger, G2 just got the first CS of the game, killing that ward. And of course, on a champion like Akali, has plenty of ways to style on his opponents. But No Man's also on Aurelia. Lots of flashing is in there as well, as G4 is going to roam up and ward that red, trying to get the information. But as we can see, and an L6 currently. Oh, right there, the river. Yeah, and totally fine. Everyone has full information that this is happening, so they know exactly which side the junglers are starting. In response, you can see Santos there is uh, also warding the red, so they should know that Xin Zhao is starting top side of the map. Yep, the requisite this is cute. Look at Santos. Hanging out. Yeah. Uh, oh, looking for a level that's one. That's a bad day. Oh, oh that's, that's the worst one. day. Barely missing out. Oh. Hate like, to see it's it. like you missed the bus, and like, oh, that feels bad, but then you also spill your coffee. Not a great start there for Santa's, but I like the uh, the style. Also, like this here, level two gank from June with blue buff. Not always seen, but we'll see if it's effective here versus boss. Seems like they're gonna go in right now. Well, things are gonna start off. The root already down. That's a quick ignite flash forward, and this should be an easy kill here for June. It is in its first blood. And that's what we expect from Mega's jungler. So it took a little bit while uh, it took a little bit to wind up, but he is now awake. He is alive on this MSI stage, and he now has a first blood in his pocket. Trades the summoners, so we'll see if he does want to go for the revisit at any point. But now just gonna take the left side scuttle crab, which is a nice way to cap off a very good gank to start off this game. Now, I kind of wanted to revisit what it meant for Santos to miss that attempted gank on the mid lane. And you can see that, yeah, they were always going to get pushed into that bot lane. You're against a Sivir as well as the Dalio. But I was curious how it would transition into the jungle, losing that much priority as... Four going to go in as well. Oh, he oh! found the flip. It auto attack follows the flash. No man's goes down solo. He could have just walked away. It was that moment when you're like, ah, nothing will happen here. No, GeForce, today something happens. Yep, Shuriken Flip finds its mark. TP back instantly there for No Man's. And no aggressive summoner. So no aggressive keystone and no ignite needed, but we'll watch this one again. I do like the uh, instantaneous flash from June to follow that one up, make sure he connects with the auto. Got to make sure to secure it. And again, this one here. I mean, No Man's dancing around, thinking maybe he can get some poke down. G4 just like, yeah, you're trading uh, not that well here. And then can't see this flip. G4 nails it. And then at that point, it's too late. Just didn't account for the damage that was going to come out of Kali. Didn't respect that he didn't have access to the flash. Feels bad. Certainly does. And uh, G4 certainly take it. A good way to start for a player that we are looking to have a pretty high impact. Boss, though. Getting it done there on the top side here. Bottom lane though, action already starting. Lloyd looks to be dead, will go down. Barely even needed this jungler. Just there for the uh, moral support. Had to push the wave out. Always feels good. It is a teleport on Lloyd, however, so he's just going to TP back into the lane, not be uh, denied any of this gold or this experience. Going to push things in. And an Arsic, of course, will finish his back. And uh, Lloyd won't miss too much, except the death that he's now suffered. I guess he wish he could have back. Looking for the Essence Reaver. It looks like as the rush as well as taking a look at it. Nice flash taunt. Make sure that he uh, connects with Lloyd. Like we were saying, Kindred just there for the moral support. Making up for the one he missed at level one as well, I feel like. Nice and on target there for Santa's. Almost felt like that would have worked without the jungler, but you never know. So might as well bring Kindred down there. Boss also building up a pretty decent CS lead actually, despite getting ganked. Using that rise early pressure to really harass the top laner. Should be able to take most of this wave as well. Lines it all up. And this is just one. One or two. Still up 10 CS despite the pressure that enemy jungle did show him earlier on. I like opening up the space for a, a nanostick to look for a counterplay here. So 
Obviously, Boss was trying to check if he was going to be dove right there. I like the response from uh, Mega to say, no, 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 I'm diving a rise. Probably a bad idea, especially when we show on Vision. But good uh, conservative play to make sure nothing fishy was happening on either side. Rocky, they're also going to go for a walk and at least find a control ward. Jun behind him, so maybe can leap in here. Down a level right now, Kindred is going to go for it here, but no mid laner. Which means that you can't really chase, and Jun's like, yeah, I think I can go for this here. Turn on the Conqueror. Actually, the Phase Rush, excuse me. It's now the Kindred that turned on that Keystone. But Jun, one more auto, and that's it. Oh, G4 couldn't come in time. And now with the ulti, he's going to get the first kill. Perfect execution, aptly named. Still has the second charge. Going to run away from No Man's, but... Actually, doesn't have it left. Excuse me, must use it to gap close. What a flash, though. Reads the mind of Aurelia and dodges the Vanguard's edge. Very nicely executed there by G4 to not only get the rotation, but like you're saying, uh, predict the play and disengage himself from it appropriately. Uh, as far as the Kindred versus Zen, I like the fact that Ananasik held on to his Q, because uh, basically that's what it was going to determine. Doesn't want to use the Q early for the damage, because he knows that June's only option here is to try to look for the gap close. Um, finds the knockup, the Q then comes out from Ananasik, he creates the space in the distance, and he's able to walk down the melee versus range matchup. G4 tried to make it over in time, but couldn't find it. Does manage to get out of this situation quite nicely. Still, despite how late it felt like Mega were coming to that play, she managed to find something at least there for G4, who's, again, with two kills up, still the play to watch here on the Mega side. We wanted this Akali to go off. He's uh, certainly put in the position to do so. Feels bad in the CS department, but obviously those two kills are making up for it. And the gold difference between those two is another setup. Santos doesn't have flash, but still has that taunt. No ultis here either for anyone actually involved in this play currently. And there's again another wraparound here. Lloyd with no flash. Gonna get away from the taunt. Though. I think he must have just used it, so he may have missed seeing that cooldown. Regardless. A little bit of pressure, but no kill this time. Yeah, the real unfortunate thing for Lloyd is that the uh, Q from Kindred looked like it proc the spell shield. Maybe it was Wolf had to go back and look at it. And then without having access to the spell shield, he was forced to run the flash because he didn't have anything to get out of the taunt. You know, at least going to try and take something away. Does manage to get the junk up off there, but Aranasik also taking caps away for himself. Takes his blue, hits six, and uh, now ready to really team fight it up here with his blue buff, but. Red side jungle starting to go missing. Jun gets the red and all but the last little raptor that Anasik does make sure to finish off. And I was going to say that I really like the confidence from Jun. You know, he feels that because G4 has like the, the shortcut into that transition that he's going to go contest raptors. But he did that without Jun or G4 even being in the lane. So just using information accordingly. Up in again. Oh, good flash, but still gets clipped by the onslaught of Shadow Sphere. And again, June comes top and gets kill. It's just that easy. Yeah, the Onslaught of Shadows as well as tagging him with that red buff. And this looks like a completely different jungler for Mega than the first half of this tournament. June really finding his stride on this Sin Zhao and teaming up really well with the likes of Rocky and G4. Boss starting to get a little bit punished, but still at least keeping up in farm for now. It does have the TP, but will likely be forced to burn it. Does use it there. Make his way back to the lane. Mid lane, though. 2v1 right now for G2. Can he find his way out of this one? No Man's is trying to herd G4 towards that bush. Ooh, a nice little job. All the stun lance as well. And here's the Kindred surprise. G4 in the shroud flips out of the way. They will chase down, but can't quite get in range. No Man's doesn't want to dive the turret, so G4 stays safe. Yeah, still able to disengage despite not having the flash. As possibly a, a counterplay here. You can see Zin Zhao went over the wall. Had to burn everything. Stun lance for No Man's, but no way to follow that one under the turret. Especially without the Kindred ulti. Pass. Now gonna get jumped on. Good ult reaction. Sanjin at it also coming in. So now gonna go towards it. Knockback. He's still gonna leave Santa in the middle there, but Galileo comes up by the two man knockup. Flash into the tour for the two as well. And now No Man's gonna be the target. Santa's looks to go down as well. First kill goes over to June, who grabs another. Santa's burning down to the ignite. Is barely gonna leave as he dashes out of there, but no real hope gets ignited again. And that will give it over to Rocky. The fade away ignite from Rocky. And this looks like, again, a completely different team for Mega. The ability to rotate first to the play, to collapse on top of it. It was a party in that upper river. And it was Mega who got the last laugh. 
And again, reactions here are great from Ananasik, but still enough here for the Galio roaming up as well. And you know, initially I was like, ah, oh, no, uh, June's going to go in on this and he's going to get baited by the Kindred ultimate. But the fact that uh, Pop has incredible follow-up there, that everyone starts piling in, immediately turns to the play, very well executed from the whole squad from Mega. And I think that's the thing for me, is this was a fun fight away ignite by Rocky. Yes, I think Jun is playing like a very different looking player, maybe more like his domestic self. But the team just seems so much more cohesive this go around. Yeah, it feels like the team is really plugged into him or he is plugged into them and they're working really well together. Rift Herald is uh, the next reward they get for all that play. G4 getting away from No Man's forced to burn the Shroud. But still, despite the pressure, only down a little under 10 CS. Feeling just fine in the bot lane is Going relatively well here. Lloyd is going to TP back and clear this up. Actually, it's farming up nicely. So things feeling pretty solid right now for Mega, who are up about 1,500 gold. It's now just about uh, how they'll exit this lane phase and kind of what they'll do with the advantage and where they have them. Uh, again, still feels really good to have it onto the Akali, but, you know, if she's able to use this as effectively post lane phase and break some of these things while there's such a strong 5v5 comp from Vega, we'll see. They also picked up there after the team out. We've seen a lot of team out first Aurelia in both the top lane and the mid lane. I think it's really important specifically for mid lane just because of its access into the jungle and having priority there means so much to uh, allow your jungler to make aggressive plays or kind of set tempo. Saw No Man's dance around the minions before. We'll, we'll do watch it again, but we'll go back down to bot lane where Lloyd is doing a similar bit of work here on the minions. Cloud Drake is once again being wrongfully ignored. So Ananasik just showing up, seeing what he can get done as G4. Maybe he finds a room here. I think they might find a dive here. Here we go. One sort of shadows out. G4 dives in, lands the Q. Boss not able to get out in time with the Realm Warp, and that last turret shot barely out of range. No man's trying to find the angle, but doesn't have a flash to follow. I mean, it feels bad when it's the Akali that takes the tower aggro and yet still gets out of the play successfully. Yeah, it's the... Uh Drake over at least, but Jun gonna channel the Rift Tail. Rocky now onto No Man's, who tried to help up here in the top lane. Boss still dead for five more seconds with no TP. The Rift Tail are gonna charge up. Gold will go over, and Jun's diving in, but Stanton knighted out. Vanguard's dead, gonna follow. Shen delivered straight into the waiting arms. Here comes G4. For the rest of Mega, and Rocky now dead. No Man's might make it a double here. As Jun gonna finally take a death. Santa's into stasis. He'll be safe. G4, though, maybe not so lucky. Chase it through, gets the sword slow, but G4 really looking to pop things off here. Dancing back around and forth, still gets done. Nomad's able to find it, but G4 finds the kill again. 4-0-1 now. Meanwhile, bottom. Gadget finds the Hemo play and an Arsic right behind him. Flash onto Lloyd, that's the target. Lloyd flashes out as well. Galio with the ulti, but there's a Lambs Respite to keep the fight going alive. Lloyd about to go back in there. All but Pop can't find the Justice Punch. And an Arsic though will die to Lloyd as Gadget will find the dive and maybe secure the kill. Yes, he is able to grab it as Gadget forced to turn tail from the TP in from Rocky. He was speeding up and looking to charge him down. Flash ready here for the Vladimir. He flashes back over. He wants to kill Pop. That's probably a one way ticket there, mate. No, Gadget just running out of the way. Rocky, surely your E's back up soon. He's going to chase under the turret. Transfusion ready. I think Gadget's out. He is. He doesn't want it. He knows that Santos is probably very close. He doesn't want to try to go for the dive, contest with the pool, but across the map. Again, it feels like a completely different group. Yesterday, it was like five kills at 25 minutes. Now everything is exploding. Who is this man? Protobotting back in towards the heck room as now Mega rotates the jungler back down. Gadget just playing real aggressive here. But we need to take stock of the map, kind of rewind our minds and cast back to who was, again, the big winner as everything kind of fell apart on the map. For me, it's still the fact that uh, G4 is so powerful. Now has the completed Gunblade, and they're looking at... Cute flash there, G4 in, that's an easy kill. I was like, 4-0, probably gonna be a 5-0. Only that one assist, he'll take it. Now, what do you mean? It was all him, clearly. <laughs> Santa's about to face check pop, not quite enough to worry about here. Is G4 actually going to rotate down to the bot lane? Now Gadget's going to fancy a go. He's two levels down. No one has ultis here just yet, but it's like both of them just kind of pass each, but pass each other by at the end of it all. Oh, I was going to say, where are we actually going to start with this one? Um, so No Man's goes in with Santos, and then G4 is actually teleporting right now down by the tower. You can see him coming in through the bottom of your screen. And at this point, it feels like No Man's really just sacrifices for Santos, does a little bit of dancing, and it's G4 who wins, and now Rocky who wins. Yep. 
Rocky always wins. Haven't you seen the films? Gonna take the turret here in top as well. Don't have time to play the whole replay. Turns out there's too many kills happening in this game. 16 with 15 minutes of play, Frostguru, and that's my kind of pace. Uh, the chains are off. Everyone's just here to play now. Severalty pop to retreat. Vanguard Z is good. And, and Anasik gonna dive back in. Lloyd likely the target. Nomad's not that much health to play with, but enough to make that work. Feels a lot better, and they're now continuing for the dive. Here comes Santos. Santos in. Pop. Oh! Ooh. Gonna stop it off, but doesn't land the taunt. Just as punch. Favorably interacting there that time for Galio. But meanwhile, while everyone is chasing on Vega, uh, Mega are getting a lot of time with these structures, not only the top lane, but also that mid lane. You can see Xin Zhao now skirting down. Should get a sizable chunk here, possibly even push it down. Trying to be a response. Kind of creep dying, but Kindred here to clean up the rest of these creeps, and Gadget will take the remaining. So mid turret still available, but not taken just yet. Let's all watch this one again. I feel very nervous every time we go into a replay because I just feel like every time we get out of it, there's just a massive brawl that's happening. But again, line up the main guard's edge, dive straight in. No lands for spike, but knew they had enough damage to make sure to get the kills. No man splashes out. Yeah, unfortunately, Galio, kind of once he uses his big combo, there's not a lot he could do for his ADC versus something like an Alistar or a Tom Kench. So that was a I will remember you moment. Fondly, most certainly. This looks like we've had. At least Vega moving there. Duo lane down. Boss though, no turret to run to. Stand United there from Santa is going to try and save some of the day. Realm Warp in. Santa finds the taunt, and that's Boss out of there. Nicely done, but that's using a lot of big ultimates just to disengage from a bit of an overextension on the top side of the map. Yeah, have to be careful. I mean, Hecarim himself more than capable of running you down that lane, but Jun has showed a lot of preference up towards that top half of the map. Mega starting to band together a little bit more, trying to take down this mid out of turret. Yeah, I feel like it really just gives license to Mega that they can play hyper aggressive here and try to force some of these structures down. Another ulti there from Lloyd, but not quite enough damage on this turret. Needs maybe two or three autos, but Wave is lagging behind. Okay, no man's. So here's your 2v1 scenario. All right, you want to make a montage? It starts here. G4 into the shroud, popping down, flips back over, beautifully played. There's the Lancer's Bite, finds the stun, but now G4, can he find the execute after this all? How many is he going to get? He grabs one, and an Arsic down for the count as well. There's the double kill over to G4. Galio or Prox, Gadget and Santa's forced to turn tail, but Jun might find the gap close here. Has the E lined up, needs to get in range. Tower in mid falls over to Lloyd. And Gadget into pool out safely, but Vega still lose two. And unfortunate for No Man's, just wasn't his montage he was in. It's G4 again picking up more kills, now looking to go legendary on Mr. Kali. He's 7, 0, and 1. And in the meantime, it's two towers and a dragon for Mega. Right now he's in G4's video, and that highlight reel is stacking up nicely. Mega overtaking in the gold. Now a substantial lead as another Drake will go over to them as well. And this just has to feel so good to finally get, you know, some sort of representation of your power level on this stage for the Thai team. Um, and especially because it's G4 of all players. You know, coming into this, it felt the playstyle really did start with the jungle. But the most consistent member for this tournament has been G4. And it feels like Mega finally recognized that and are getting him all of the firepower to pop off. I think it reinforces how valuable experience is in a lot of ways. Watch this one again. No man, he tried his best, but his best was not enough today. And and it felt bad, you know, using the uh, Q pretty early on. Obviously, didn't expect someone to be behind him, so just wanted to get away from the CC. Possibly thought that people were chasing behind the Xin Zhao. Uh, and then from there, the Collapse comes in, and the Kindred Ultimate is definitely not enough. Certainly not. Thankfully, Scientist and Gadget managed to run away. The Mega is still continuing to snowball this one. Very curious to see. I mean, Vega haven't really played much from behind at all so far in this group. So. Pretty sizable disadvantage. That is something to look for, kind of the key takeaways about how this team does play from the back foot. Um, and it's hard to say just because, you know, this is a, a very different game than if this was the qualifier into moving on to the best of five. But so far, there seems to be a bit of disrespect about the information alongside the map, people being caught out, whether it's boss or no man's being very deep in blind enemy ter uh, territory. Don't want to say that that's definitely going to happen in the best of five, because again, context is really important here, but something to keep our eye on. Certainly so. Rocky is finding a new time to push here in the bot lane. The Trinity Force into Spirit Visage seems to be the go. As John does get stunned up, but again, not too much aggression here. 
that Vega can really afford, so they will lose another turret. That's their fourth turret gone now as the outer ring is now officially felled. And G4 also finding himself in a side lane. I mean, two items here, plus the Sook Cruise, 7 0 1 on the Akali. Not really anyone 1v1 that can take on G4 right now. Trying to stick to Rocky, maybe June. Yeah, ulti is just to disengage. Santas has a flash and a taunt ready. Will continue. Ooh, actually doesn't. I guess they can't see anyone. So maybe trying to, you know, say, okay, we're blind. Let's not overstep our, overstay our welcome now. But at this point in the map setup, uh, lane assignments are going to be really critical here for Vega Squadron if they want to kind of stop bleeding and, and slow down the pace of this game for them to catch back up. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't feel like anyone can deal with G4 in the 1v1, so they're going to need to commit multiple resources. Now, they do have the tools on their composition to do that um, with the likes of, of Santos, um, but I feel like they still need at least three members to really secure the kill and make sure it doesn't trade back 1v1. So I'm on Santos now. Like, Can he clear out this vision so that if G4 is in a side lane, someone can skirt underneath him? And is the stand United on point to try to make the difference here. And again, we talk about Mega kind of finally having their jungle lead out as expected, but really playing cohesively well together, at least in this particular game. How they continue to do that as a team will certainly show a lot of growth. As I said before, experience is so valuable on these big stages. And for how many new players are playing from Mega, I mean, yes, they have some veterans, but it's mostly made up of international rookies. Certainly, if we see them again on a big stage, expect things to be quite a bit different because. We've heard it from a lot of these players that haven't had this experience before. It is just, it's impossible to adapt to until you're in it. And it's just, yeah, you have no idea kind of what you're going to experience or, or what kind of situation you're going to put in. Now, one of the things that Mega have shown as one of their weaknesses um, is that they can be a bit hesitant to pull the trigger, especially on like big objectives around Baron. So even when they do find themselves in massive gold leads in their finals, they'd sometimes try to play a little bit too cautiously. I'll see if that's going to be the case here or if they feel a bit better, kind of put their foot on the gas and really drive this one home. Well, Vision's getting pretty starved here for Vega around the Baron pit, which is never a good thing. Jun also lying in wait. Just going to take out the control woods that they've tried to set up, but they're pretty shallow and they're about to lose them. Jun gets both here. And this. G4 looking for his 1v2 highlight. Once again, the stun does connect there. Over the wall he goes. Very well played. And a thousand shutdown gold gifted over to Aurelia. And G4 was trying to be respectful there. You could see he was backing off, but just a really good read from Vega Squadron, making sure that they uh, cleared out all of the, the vision in the jungle so that uh, Gadget was able to go down their blind and find the 2v1. And even though Aurelia did a lot of the work, you know, Vladimir was there for the ride. Hey, Hemo Plague is a very powerful ultimate, so if nothing else committing that, usually is the difference between all they lived, lived at 10% and all they overkilled at 150. So certainly enough there. A crucial amount of gold being given over, and No Man, I think one of the best players to get. They've got some good carries, but Aurelia will be happy given how poorly the matchup was going earlier on. I mean, it's going to help them a lot to just you know, get a foot back into this game and feel better. And Aurelia is still going to be absolutely terrifying out into one of these side lanes. It feels like you can only stop Aurelia really for so long. And uh, at this kind of level of play where you have so many players who are just kind of skill checking each other on mechanics, I'm not willing to call the matchup one way or the other because it feels like at the end of the day, just the better player is going to win out. Well, so looking forward to any sort of stylish battle we could have between Akali and Aurelia. But for now, it is just sweeping out the vision again Mega did get themselves a Mountain Drake, which will help with any future Baron attempts. But again, as you said, they have a tendency to play things a little bit slowly now, and I do feel like maybe they've given Vega a little too much time without growing this gold lead. And it can be really hard to play this uh, aspect of team play on a competitive stage, you know, making sure that um, your lane assignments and your side lanes are, are set up correctly, that you're taking the necessary steps to clear out the, uh, the Baron, and that you're also having faith that you can calculate how quickly you can turn and do that Baron. Red buff steal, so not a bad start here though. Mega again just trying to really put their foot down in this very crucial quadrant of the map, given that Baron is basically at the forefront of all 10 players' minds right now. And they're doing well, but they have a, a limited window to do so. You can see that Hecarim has now just backed. He's running down towards where No Man's is shoving down that big wave, and then he's going to push it forward. He's going to cheat up through the river and try to look for a play, but this is kind of the rinse and repeat, this wash cycle that Mega are stuck in around this Baron dance. But, you know, you, you need to 
You need to flex a little bit more. Yeah, when you get a lead, it's not just enough to, you know, sit on it and try and hope the game goes your way. You need to extend your lead. Granted, you are given some time because you have already built a lead for yourself that you can lean on, but converting advantage into more advantage into win is usually the way you want to go. Not converting advantage into just farming things out, as this is not a bad pick, boss. Too far in the top side gets picked off by Pop and Co. And you can see why he was confident stepping forward. That was the one bush that wasn't warded. Vega have done a really good job kind of like regaining control over this quadrant, but Mega, just a lot of patience right there. They want to play this one very much by the book. It's now bottom lane. I think he's going to walk it off. Yeah, no man's just gets out of there. No one's committed any cooldowns just yet. And both these champions are pretty durable, able to heal back and forth. No man's though, I think now knows that something is up. He's gonna dive in though, potentially here. Looks for the stun does not connect it, and Lloyd is down here running into it all. Sand United getting used, but again, now a 2v2 gonna start. Rocky though, gonna be the first kill, potentially redemption down. No man's finds the snipe. It will be a trade as Lloyd gets the next one, and now G4, we're gonna pick up Santa's. No hope at all for the Shen. Another kill into the Akali pocket. She should now take control of being over in that bottom lane. A lot was expended to kind of trade one for one, but it doesn't translate into an objective. And again, Mega, you know, finding some moments here, but still not really growing this lead by that much more. We're getting closer to 6,000, but it's kind of sat between the 3 and 6 mark for a lot of these last 10 minutes or so. And it feels like Mega are, uh, you know, trying to Rubik's Cube out how they split up this map. You know, they've got uh, Rocky down here on the Hecarim. That didn't feel too great. You could see that he was starting to win, but competing with the Shin was difficult. So maybe now they decide, okay, G4 is going to be our guy that's responsible into the side lane. As you said, also, Aurelia just kind of hits the point where it doesn't feel like you can really win anymore. Not saying we're there yet, but... Oh, we're just going to TP and fight them right now! Boss is out of there! Or is he? He gets stunned immediately by G4's ulti, and Lloyd collects the last hit as a result. The Vision Line is just getting exhausted here from Vega. They are trying their hardest to not lose control over this area, but eventually it's just getting too difficult, too much of an uphill battle. The jungler is still alive, so they can smite contest for this. Try and try it here. Torn actually lands on the pop, but he's got a taunt of his own. Finds three. G4 round the back. Lands just by pop, but Vegas Squadron may just be denying the inevitable. Gallio comes through. Gadget gets a kill. Sanders getting chest down by Lloyd. Will fall, but Vegas still actually fighting this one out. June did revive, had the GA popped. That will at least pull them off Baron. Not bad for Vegas Squadron. You know what's crazy too is that as we have another rinse cycle of kind of like this repeat Baron setup, look at all of the teleports uh, that Vegas Squadron still have. So their ability to actually play a map or to the side lane safely, as long as they just don't get, you know, cleaned up by uh, some of these assassins or by the Hecarim, I actually think this is massive for Vegas Squadron because they got the TP out of the Hecarim from the top lane and stalled out the Baron. Yeah, you see the fight kind of finish off here. I thought G4 was going to clean them all up, but. Wanted for him, not really able to do so, and Vega at least take a trade. You can see that they're starting to inch back a little bit closer on these 5v5s. They are, and as you said, those TPs are a pretty big difference. It's three apiece, but Mega have now used all of theirs, and as you said, Frost, all three up now for Vega. So at least I think delaying this game, getting more farm, trying to like catch up on gold is certainly viable, but maybe more if you can find a good cross map play or just spread them out so thin that you can take some objectives. Vega can make real ground here. It at least makes it very easy for uh, Vega to make a decision that if they want to kind of cut back to one of those side lanes, that they can commit multiple members because they can just TP back to the Baron pit. The big thorn in Vega's uh, side is actually that top tower that G4 is pushing out uh, still being up because it denies the minion wave from going down. Uh... And Nussik getting coverage on the Drake here by his top laner, but... Rocky did not like the first part of the event. Santa's a very easy target. Pops down the Spirit's Refuge. Default though, just going to find another assassination target. But here comes No Man's and Gadget. Vanguard's Edge out. Hemoplague already popped. TP in as well. Vega going to try and clean it up here. Jun dead. Jungler being down always means Baron is a possibility. And you can see Hecarim trying to pick where he's going to attack on the map. He's starting to run towards the team fight. The call was, no, 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 it's already over. And so instead, he skirts back towards the, uh, the bottom side of the lane. Is trying to push up and maybe get some chip damage on that tower. Good news there for Mega is it's just the trade. Even though it is support for Jungler, Santa's though trying to ward but can't get too far without running into G4. And it feels uh, a little bit desperate from Mega. You can tell that they kind of know what they want to do. They want to try to break open this game by finding the picks, but you know, overreaching, not really account uh, accounting for the fact that they didn't have perfect information, that they're still dealing with a lot of teleports and losing a lot of steam over this Baron. It feels like we've been 
in gridlock here for the last seven minutes. Certainly, and I think, you know, some of the earlier mishaps, I can maybe fault more on, like, just sloppiness from Vega. Maybe not playing, you know, as focused as they have been earlier in the day. I think at this point now, they're just getting exhausted. Like, this battle for vision over the Baron Quadrant that has been going on for at least 10 minutes, where Vega has just been trying so hard to get their vision going, has to feel exhausting, because you have to check every single time when you don't have vision and a few people are missing. The nice thing is, is that while it has been exhausting, Mega still aren't capitalizing on the fact that when they do manage to win that vision war, and again, that top tower is so frustrating for Vega. They really need to get that down if possible um, to alleviate one of the pressure points of having to constantly respond to that top wave. Yeah, the lane is just so long that it takes forever to push it all the way there and even try and get some pot shots on it. So Vega, again, it's tough balancing where they can. Have No Man's now in the bot lane with his teleport ready. Uh, TP starting to come back up for Mega. Lloyd's actually got his back already. And continue game of patience here. I mean, five turrets to one. Vega have such a small map with which to play in. But Mega really are giving them time here. Maybe they're undoing as they will start the Baron again. G4 sort of, sort of playing interference. He sees the jungler. And that's going to be Baron over Mega. They finally found the window they needed. And after 10 minutes, they take the Baron. They finally found the confidence that they needed to just try to make that play. Because, again, your ability to turn off the Baron if Vega do manage to get to it, you don't have to take the Smite Contest when you're this far ahead playing from Foo side. You can say, hey, if Vega don't have it warded, we'll get it for free. If they do show up, we have Sivir Ult, we have the uh, the Galio Dash, we have Akali, we have Zin Zhao, Hecarim. All of our champions can immediately pick up and get off of this Baron and look for the engage. So, you know, it took Mega a while, but... They finally found it, the right call. Well, gold difference has been pretty stagnant as uh, Mega have just tried to find their map advantage more than anything else and convert it into what has now been this Baron. So they're up about 6,000 gold. We'll see how much that grows at the end of this Baron. Because again, it's one thing to play ultra safe and try and guarantee yourself a Baron. It's another to now have the Baron and still play the same way. Yeah, and it is still a lot of tools on the Vega squadron side. They need to be still a bit respectful here, uh, Mega because uh, they still have firepower to fight back. Rise is with a righteous glory second. You know, sometimes you just gotta get them. Just gotta have the utility. They go rotating down, might start a fight. Rocky the first target, but not too bad. Jun diving in. But again, just finding that poke. No major cooldowns committed. G4 and Pop though onto this turret. Actually chunking very heavily onto the inhibitor turret. Boss pops the righteous glory. As the utility you were talking about does get G4, but doesn't really take very much damage. Does use the Gunblade, though, but stays very healthy in and amongst it all. Seems to be hit-and-run performance for Mega. Just trying to rip Vega around the map. Peeking in, pushing down on these towers. Someone steps out. If they find a trade that they like, they'll probably pull the trigger on it. Yeah, have not, plenty of hard engage. Not committing to the, the wide angles of the map, though. Staying close together, because I think they expect Vega to fight. <laughs> under these inhibitor turrets. Unfortunately, that does mean that it is much tougher to try and knock down these structures when you're only pressuring two lanes with your Baron. And you know, while Boss did go for more of the utility arrives, there's still a lot of bite and teeth left for Vega on you know the other three members that they have. At this point in the game, Gadget is a big deal, um, as well as uh, Pineapple here. Just needs to find the fight, though. Of course, if you missed the early interview with Rift today, that is uh, Ananasi. And then apparently just means pineapple. Just pineapple. I like that the mystery has been solved. Mountain Drake also up, but no interest in that right now. Still 50 seconds with this Baron. That's Ooh. a lot of damage. Gadget starting it off. Hemo Plague finds three, but not enough cooldowns left to get the kill. Lloyd again uses that Sivir ulti to disengage. But if you want to talk about how big Gadget is, certainly looking good. But Sivir, I mean, this is approaching the, the dream state for Sivir. You just have more gold and items than you can ever think to do with. Yeah, and unfortunately that damage just isn't uh, sticking to the side of Vega from Lloyd there. It feels like everyone is really ready to fight. You have to be respectful, so they're looking for the perfect fights, but Vega feels like, even though they're in the driver's seat, that they're losing some steam, that they are still very scared to kind of really punch the last hole into Vega. Oh! I think looking for the perfect fight is a good way to put it, because I feel like they are looking for like the absolute best case scenarios, where a lot of times, you just have to take what looks decent sometimes, especially when you have a lead. 
but at least we'll fall back to the mountain drake we are certainly in for a long one here for us going already this has been i think one of the longer games of today yes i know the front half of the games were long but it felt like since that game four happened and vegas steamrolled in 22 minutes that everyone was like all right this is what it's about let's pick up the pace but mega is doing everything overly safely and you know i get it when uh you're in your last game on msi you want to make sure that you can take down the number one team that feels really good you want to go for the 100 percent play um but I feel like League is really starting to favor the bold in terms of everyone's expectations coming into this MSI. You know, everyone was really hyped for Griffin when they went into their finals against SKT, even though SKT won the final. Everyone's really hyped about G2's play style, about IG's play style, that very, like, aggressive, uh, medium, uh, I'm going to say medium risk, really high reward. And that's what those types of plays look like to me. You know, if you wash there trying to end the game with that Baron, you'll give away some gold leads, so you can make the argument that you know, if you give them all these shutdown bonuses, that's a composition that scales really well. Maybe that closes the game for you because then trying to out 5v5, Vegas comp is just dead. But if you do win, you know, you just end the game there. There's no Baron that they could immediately run to, maybe to get the Mountain Dragon. So I feel like if you're just playing around the shutdowns, maybe you take the gamble, maybe you take the chance. But right now, eventually, Vegas comp for me will outscale. And that's the thing, like, yes, you might get them to a point where they can actually fight 5v5 because you gave them a bunch of gold, but they're also going to get gold. The game doesn't stop just because you're ahead. The minions keep streaming in. The gold keeps going up passively. I mean, Gadget's almost at full build and I feel like hasn't done much other than farm for quite a while now. The uh, big turning point for me is actually still Rise. The fact that he's 0-6, like he's still pretty far behind, especially going utility that early on in his build, as well as having to have the Void Staff because MR was coming out. Um, as soon as he kind of gets to to four going on to five items, I feel like that's when I feel really confident about Vega Squadron. You can say that that's a bazillion CS Sivir. That's a, a crazy Fetakali. I still think that these team fights will come down to execution, but the, the core of it is both teams have bite. They can both turn a team fight depending on how things go sideways. At this playing stage, sometimes it feels like just the better players win on the day. It can come down to snap, split second decisions. You know, I've certainly seen that. A lot of those from Vega or Tournament Long. Still looking to go undefeated here in this playing group stage. Baron is back up, so it's time to start face checking, but they are sticking together at least. Boss also rotating over from the bot lane, so just kind of scooping up the waves and ready to TP in when he is needed. See Hellmega look to set up again. They were very cautious last time. Let's see if that changes at all. Lloyds are, he says, takes matters into his own hands. Starts hitting the Baron. I like his confidence. I do too. Going out very quickly as well. They finally get some vision, but G4 might just try and stop the smite from coming in. Ananasi goes down, puts a lamp to a spite in. But I think he might die before he can try and get the steal. Baron looking to go over. It is June that finds the smite. Another team fight looking to break out here as Galio goes back in. Three man knock with a good pull from Gadget. Might actually be enough here. Boss trying to fire him where he can. Everyone's in the pit. It's an absolutely massive scramble, and G4 finds a massive ulti as Mega finally find the ace. And that should be the game. The death timers are massive. They've got the Baron behind him. They can mow through it. It was a split fight, and by the time that Vega actually got into the pit, the team fight was already over. The gold lead speaks for itself. They have the Baron, they have the power, and they will finally have the game. Vega, they knew they had to try something, but Sansa's in the player camp, hands on head at the end of it all. Mega made them work for it. They will not go undefeated as Mega can take a bow as they finish off their MSI with a win. And you know what? I'm happy to see G4 doing his thing on an international stage once more. Certainly maybe not the player he once was, at least looked like domestically. It felt like the fresh blood on that team was the ones really looking good. But again, the experience matters here when it, when it pays off. Akali goes big, it's not the Zed you wanted, but hey, we'll take it and so will Mega. All I wanted was a ninja that's gonna blink around the screen. I still got that from G4. Basically the same, like we discussed earlier. And more importantly, it feels like Mega fans finally got to see their team actually show up on the international stage. It feels really bad when uh, you know, your team loses, but it feels even worse when your team loses, not playing how they do domestically. So this time around, we got the real Mega. June was popping off in the early game. G4 was on the Assassin, flashing around. Lloyd was the consistent carry that we know him to be, and everything felt right. Certainly did feel like it fell into place. Vega, again, caught fatigue, caught sloppiness for them. They already knew what was going to happen to them, regardless of the result of this game. We certainly would have liked to win. Every competitive player likes to win. Going undefeated would have been nice, but 
Unfortunately, couldn't make it this time around. And I think it's really important to kind of identify what you can take away from that game from Vega and when you can't. And because of context, I don't feel like there's anything to take away. Uh, maybe if things start to show up again in the best of five, like mid-series, that's when you start to evaluate. You know, these players do have an issue playing from the back foot. They do have an issue overextending. But right now, you can tell that it was a, a bit of a slugfest. Yeah, they probably would have wanted to win it, but I don't think there's any holes that you learn from that series to punch into Vega. Well, wasn't too many fights, but the final one certainly did look good. We'll take a look at how... Mega finally overcame this game. I feel like a huge issue is that the uh, the call was split. You know, are we going for the smite steal? Are we not going for it? The fact that Ananasik gets into the pit so early on trying to contest the steal, whereas uh, then the rest of his team all just files in. But at that point, it's almost kind of too little too late. Boss is locked out. You're then in a, a, a massive death bowl of a Sivir where she's just bouncing around damage. But they just get eaten alive. 2-4 blinking all around the place. As you can see that gold graph. Slowly but steadily was climbing up. You can see that little plateau right near the end as they were trying to figure out how to nab the Baron and finish off the game. But at the end of it, shoot up to 12k ahead. And my goodness, G4 and Lloyd, those are numbers. To see an Akali similar to a Siva in a game that long in damage is pretty impressive. Uh, what was crazy to me was the fact that the Galio support did more damage in the Rise top lane. Oh no. That was not a good look there from Boss. Uh, the O7 unfortunately to finish that one off, but unsurprisingly our player of this game, of course, goes to G4, making it count at the end of it all. Had a lot of style to boot this game. Yeah, and he did it in the 1v1s, he did it into the team fights, he did it in the side lanes, the show up. Like, you got every kind of look from G4 that you wanted to get. And you said it repeatedly during that game, Pastry. I just want to reiterate it. You know, the veteran status experience, it's one of those intangibles, those X factors that you can't really measure on the international stage. Everyone knows that it exists, everyone has it in the conversation. But I feel like this was actually the disparity here. You cannot teach it, you can only learn. And that takes playing in tournaments like this. G4 showing up looking good. And is, of course, a Moscow player of the game. With that, we have our first best of fives coming up tomorrow. The action starts with Team Liquid versus Fong Vu Buffalo, followed by Flash Wolves against Vegas Squadron. And then, of course, the uh, two losers of that best of five will then move into our final best of five to determine the last team that will represent that final spot on MSI main stage. And of course, good talk about who we think is going to win, but very tough to judge. Again, two teams that we haven't seen yet this tournament are playing. We've got a lot of info on how both Vega and Fong Vu Buffalo have played. And don't forget, of course, winning a best of uh, MSI countdown, excuse me, will start tomorrow. So we haven't had it for these early stages, but coming to the knockouts, we will have countdowns. So don't forget to tune in half an hour earlier. They're at 12.30 a.m. Pacific on 9.30 Central. I know. Make sure to check that out. I'll be on the countdown. I'm very excited to kind of like really dig into these best of fives. I'm very excited to see how Team Liquid is going to show up uh, on this main stage and, and get a good glimpse. Because I feel like a lot of people have them count out. Maybe, maybe not so much. I mean, it's always fun. And I think, again, this this format is so cutthroat for these teams trying to qualify. Only one team gets out of these groups. And then you're in a very small double Elium best of five bracket. You got to battle it out to try and take one of the three available slots versus two teams that you assume are coming in very strong and having watched every single one of your games. Yeah, and, and again, the kind of storyline for this MSI, or at least this playing stage, felt like a, a shift in power. You know, you have the established strong regions. It used to be the likes of um, Brazil, CIS up there. And yeah, CIS and VCS pop out, but now we get to see how VCS cuts their teeth against NA and really see if that gap is shrinking or closing. And I think the Buffalo have a lot to play for, and so do all the teams playing tomorrow. But now for myself, Ross Gruen, and the entire broadcast crew, thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow for the Play in Knockouts. Vietnam's own Phong Vu Buffalo came on on top. Now we see who will get their shot at playoff knockouts from Group B with the conclusion of the group today. Great secret ball for the ulti, but it might not even be necessary. The sidestep, though, from Zero's the flash. Gets a bit of damage down, uses oh. the ulti. Zero's still alive, goes under himself, makes it out! I can't oh. believe it! Mills is going to be in trouble. The stolen ult does knock him up. The rest of DFM surviving. But Evie instantly onto the AD carry. Tay in the middle of the rest of the team. He's going to get taken out. Evie now going to be free to just pop off in this back line. No man's cuts through him. Another one's going to fall. Gadget flashing forward. Absolutely fearless. The knockout comes out, but it's too little too late. Shut down onto the bars. But the rest of the team absolutely routed. Lloyd taken down next. And Vega poised to end the game. Now Unipon looking for the individual 1v1. And I think it's just going to kill G4 here. Oh. <laughs>
Evi trying to extend the play. One dash forward. Quick look for a second one as well. Triple kill coming in for you to pawn. Evi needs to find a big execution here. He finds one. Tries to find June as well. Steel coming in. Evi is popping off in the fight. Members kept alive by the Kinder Ultimate. Trying to buy a little more time for a fight. It's not enough. Double kill for Evi. Threat trying to pull back. Ready to have that escape option. But instead, we'll just retreat. Gadget though going to lock up Mills. Gadget going over the wall. Wants to keep the fight going. Mills does not do enough damage to step forward there. He uses the God. ultimate away. He's actually just getting blasted. This is a DPS oh my check. God. <laughs> and Lewis and done great crescendo. Snare there finds two and Envy on a killing spree. Fates Cool gonna pull one up. 9TZ yet to pick up a win until right now. Trying to fire him where he can. Everyone's in the pit. It's an absolutely massive scramble and G4 finds a massive ulti as Mega finally find the A. Oh, wall of Beautiful. pain. Oh, he channeled that ulti, but he sniped Envy. Hook lands in on to Tay, who's going to dash out towards the minions, but Redburn Shinny not so lucky. Unipot on a rampage gets kill number four. Steel finishes off Tay, and Unipot making a double. Into the Lantra Spice, activated just early enough. Morgana with the ulti, I think, but after the drowsy, there's the first ball do for Aurelia. Of course, get that valuable experience. Oh, no, man! Vega going to surge into the base and clean up all the kills they can. A double kill there for the jungler. Make it three as he grabs the triple off of Unipot. Vega Squadron will fly undefeated towards the knockout stage.